morning. morning. Welcome to church on Sunday. Uh, I'm filling in for Pastor. He's up in Duluth for his daughter's graduation. Uh, Most of you know who I am, Luke Kranz. I'm one of the elders here at Emmanuel, so um, hopefully uh, everything goes well. And uh, I see the mic's working, so it's started off good. So um, uh, Announcements. uh, I'm going to have Tyler come up here in a little bit. Uh, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I know it's... uh, this rain, it'll be a nice flower growing weather. So, um, Tyler, if you want to come up. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I just want to real quickly talk about this insert that uh, has in the bullet. Um, today is our last day of Sunday school uh, for the cool kids. Uh, next Sunday, we will be uh, singing up in front of church. But uh, last year, we invited just a Sunday school out to our farm uh, for a little end turned out so nice, and it was just a fun and a fellowship. It was always fun. Um, but this year, me and Julie, uh, we talked about inviting the whole church. So if, uh, if everybody wants to come out, we're going to have burgers, hot dogs. Uh, next Sunday we sing, but then after church, uh, everybody's invited out, out to uh, our farm. Uh, and I know it, it, uh, it, it conflicts a little bit with the ambulance breakfast this next Sunday, but May is so busy. Bring the lawn chairs if you guys want. We have plenty of yard games all in the place. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully everyone can make it. It'll, it'll be a good time. It looks like good weather. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll get started with our first hymn, uh, 711, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Continue with the open versicles. 
This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is grace. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The King of Love, my Shepherd is. Jesus 
to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I, that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay, caref pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from John, the Gospel. Uh, why don't we stand for the Gospel? At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Join together in the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let's join together in reciting the Ten Commandments. You shall have the Lord your house. You shall not
joined together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. The Lord of the Lord, 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 the
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as, as long as we live in this world and life, faith and truth will be a struggle. We shouldn't expect it to be otherwise. And it was a struggle in the Old Testament times. It was a struggle for the apostles. And, and it's still a struggle for us today. It, it's not as if we can say, okay, we know the truth. We got it. Now we can move on to something else. No. The attacks and the challenges and, and the doubts, they still come. <clears throat> maybe sooner, maybe later. And error will, will keep evolving and will We'll keep trying to, to come into church in, in different ways at different times with, with different names. It's there. It's going to keep coming in. That's what we heard about in our readings today, that reading from Acts. Paul says, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after. We hear in Psalm 23 that, that Jesus prepares a table before us in the presence. Did you notice? Not the absence, but in the presence of our enemies. And from the book of Revelation, right? Those in the white robes, those are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. The message is unmistakable. Christians are not going to have it easy in this world. I've said that many times. Satan is relentless. He will exploit every weakness. He will use every ally. Some of his attacks are quick and sudden, while others are, are slow and seem to never end. Some will come from within, and some will come from without. That you can count on. But everything's not bad news. For in these readings, when we hear these things, there was good news also. There was assurance. There was reason for confidence. Paul commends the Ephesians to, to God and the word of his grace, which is able to protect and defend them, to, to build up and to give them an inheritance in heaven. Psalm 23 ends on a note of confidence. And in, in Revelation, the one in white robes were the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They weren't the ones that were swallowed up in it. Or, in other words, in each case, faith and truth wins. And, and I will go even so far as to say the truth always wins. Now, as you look around the world and the church today, it, it may not seem that way. And there were times in the Old Testament it, didn't seem that way. There were times in the early church when it seemed like the outcome was in doubt, but truth always wins. You know why? Because the truth is not just a thing. It's not just a concept. It's not just my idea against your idea. If it were, as many think of it, then we couldn't be sure who would win. It would come down to who argues better, who gets more votes, or who, as they like to say, is on the right side of history. But truth, truth, truth always wins. Because the truth is not a thing, it's not a concept, it's not an idea. It's a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus won. That's what we celebrate. On Easter, that's what we celebrate this Easter season. The, the Jews didn't win, Pilate didn't win, the Romans didn't win, the cross didn't win, the grave didn't win, Satan didn't win, sin didn't win. Jesus won. He rose from the dead, defeating all who tried to take his life, defeating all who tried to suppress the truth of his word. He won. Truth won. The battle is over. And Jesus claimed the victory as he said to, they, to those who are his, no one, no one can snatch them out of my hand. 
Now, that's a pretty confident statement, <laughs> but he backed it up. That's an absolute statement. No one can do it. For who is greater and stronger than the one who defeated sin, death, devil, and the grave for us? And to those who would answer the Father, Jesus, well, he puts that to bed as well as he says the Father and I are one. The Father will not reject the Son or those who belong to the Son. If Jesus had not been risen from the dead, then the forsakenness of the cross would have been all that we had. Our sin would still eternally separate us from God, and death and hell would seal our fate. But risen from the dead, the forsakenness is over, sin is forgiven, and there is peace with God. And so Jesus says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And what Jesus gives is given. He's not going to change his mind. He's not going to take it back. You can walk away from it, but the fault won't be his. He won. He won for you. Which, I know, doesn't mean that Satan will ever quit trying or the struggle in this world and in this life will end. In fact, as the end draws closer and the time grows shorter, he's going to try even harder. Old heresies will be recycled. Tribulation will become great and the truth will be attacked. Now in our days, we see it as the, the wolfy falsehood of tolerance dressed in truth's clothing. So how good it is. How good to know we have a shepherd, a good shepherd, to shepherd us through this world in his truth. For to know him, to know his truth is to be set free. Set free not from all enemies, but from the fear of them. Set free not from our sins, but from the guilt of them. Set free not from dying, but from death. For dying is for us just the gate to everlasting life. Jesus shepherds us through that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. St. Paul tells the Ephesians, pay careful attention to yourself and your flock. This truth must be proclaimed. Be alert also for the attacks. And for us, hear the voice of your shepherd, that you may know and follow him who knows you. For you see, this too is one of Satan's attacks. To either drown out the voice of our shepherd in, in a deluge of other voices and truths, or to convince us, to convince us who hear that it's irrelevant, that the truth is no longer the truth, that, that we know better now to judge what is invisible and visible, that, that here and now matters that what is good seems good or feels good. It's got to be good. But if you hear the voice of your shepherd, you hear something quite different than all of that. That the truth doesn't change. That there's more to life than, than meets the eye. That's what here and now it's part of something much, much bigger. Hearing the voice of your shepherd you hear of his love and his sacrifice for you on the cross. You hear of his victorious resurrection. You hear where the victory is for you today, there in holy baptism, and that the day you were baptized is your own Easter day. You hear that your sins are forgiven. Your robes are made white in the blood of the Lamb. You hear that there is no forsakenness or separation from God left for you. He took it all. You hear the quiet waters. You hear the verdant pastures of Psalm 23. Not as some mystical made-up place, but here, as your good shepherd feeds you. Here in his house, as he feeds you with his word, as he feeds you with his very own body and blood, you hear of the glorious future and the rest that waits for you. 
the lamb in the midst of his throne around which you will be. And that voice, those words are the truth. The truth will keep you. The truth will sustain you in this world, through this world, through this life, through all its attacks, through all its troubles, through all its falsehoods, through all its deceit. Because salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, the Lamb who is your shepherd. And he gives to you what is his. And what he gives is given. And so Jesus speaks to us today to encourage us, to encourage us, to put courage in us, to courage which we need. Because it is easy. It's easy to get discouraged, to look around, to lose hope, to be weary, to be in despair. So Jesus gives us what we don't have. Jesus is what we are not. Jesus is what we cannot rely on ourselves. And so we even more rely on him. You see, our feelings aren't our truth. He is. Our thoughts, our fears are not the truth. He is. Because he is the way, the life, the truth. You see, there is cause for rejoicing on this Good Shepherd Sunday. Not because the life of his flock is easy, but because our Savior is great. Our shepherd is good. And so we rejoice in his promises, which are more sure than anything in this world. And we rejoice in knowing the truth that, that no one can snatch us from our Savior's hands. Those hands that were pierced for our sins are now the hands that hold us tight. And knowing that shepherd, we can be more confident no matter what comes our way. In Revelation, we see a glimpse of our future. Psalm 23 is about us. For Jesus is the Christ. It is true. He is true. Look and listen to the empty tomb. You won't hear it or see it more plainly than that, that Christ is risen just as he said, that Christ is risen, death is defeated, that Christ is risen and our shepherd lives. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen.
Let's stand together for the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of all of us, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those who work, whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Graciously, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of married life. On this day, we, we rejoice with Dennis and Eileen Bussey as they observe their 50th wedding anniversary. Bless them in the years to come so that they may remain faithful to you and devoted to each other. By your presence, gladden each day that you graciously grant them. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, for all these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that, by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll join together in the morning prayer. Thank you, Lord, Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Amen. We'll join together in our final hymn, 740, I am Jesus, lit the Lamb. You may be seated. <laughs>